I know as soon as you saw the title of this video, you were looking at the screen and screaming, you're crazy. But before you think I'm totally insane, you have to hear me out. I know many of you have been waiting on the sidelines for the big housing crash. I even did a poll recently on my channel that showed how many people that were in the market to search for a home that was affordable. And it looks like most people have just given up. 29% of you have already said, I'm throwing in the towel. I cannot find an affordable house for myself. So with home prices, the way they have skyrocketed now, I'm sure it's just like Newton's law, what goes up must go down. Well, this housing apple doesn't look like it's gonna be falling anytime soon. Mostly because with the last housing crash, we didn't have the same players in the game like we do this time. And I'm gonna be explaining to you exactly who these players are. I'm also gonna be debunking one of my favorite YouTubers who I have a lot of respect for, but in this instance, I think he's dead wrong. So come along with me and we'll explore why it is if a housing crash was to happen, why the prices aren't gonna necessarily be more affordable for you. Many of you might have come across a TikToker named Sean Gocher, who also happens to be a real estate agent, who made a TikTok video about a certain company with deep pockets and a lot of information on the internet that all of us put our listings on that could be possibly manipulating housing market prices. Why would they pay $340 for this 31st home whenever they've only paid $300 for these others? Well, what that just did is create a new comp. So when they go to sell these other 30 homes, that extra $40,000 that you could say, this one sold for 340, just made them 1.2 million. This video goes viral. And not only does it go viral, it also gets the attention of some big investment firms like the CEO of Redfin and Zillow, the big one, and of, of several other iBuyers. And of course, all of these investment companies say that is not the case. It's all fake news. It also got the attention of one of my favorite YouTubers, Graham Stephan. For a company like Zillow to accumulate enough inventory to create a monopoly, that would be a multi-decades long process process of buying and holding houses. Without any guarantee, by the way, of ever buying enough to make any meaningful difference in the market. Now, I love you, Graham. I do. I believe that you are a very smart man. And in that video, you said that you've been in real estate for 10 years. Well, I've been in real estate now. I believe it's my 15th year, maybe 16th. And I see all the charts that you put up and all the explanations to why Zillow is really our friend. But let me explain something to you in the audience and to Graham if he happens to be watching. Zillow started a company to put houses on a website and they convinced all of us real estate agents. They had no intention of buying and selling houses or becoming a brokerage in any way, shape, or form. They kept giving us these guarantees for the last 15 plus years since they started their website. They were never going to become a brokerage. Then sure as heck what happened? They became a brokerage. Zillow at the beginning never made a profit on being a brokerage for the United States, but they still infiltrated every single real estate market with the information that we gave for free. Graham goes on to explain that companies like Zillow, iBuyer, Redfin, none of them are making necessarily a big giant profit. That really they're providing a service to people that need to sell their house quickly. In most cases, they're saying they basically break even if they're only having a small profit margin. But that's for now, just like they were never going to be a real estate brokerage. Let's just think about this. They are cash buyers. So even if the housing market was to totally tank, they could scoop up as many houses as they wanted to, and they could still sell those to companies like BlackRock. BlackRock is an investment firm that buys single family dwellings who's also claimed that they only buy a small portion of affordable housing, and they turn those houses into a rental unit. Right now, they say they're not trying to buy up every single house but slowly but surely, they're gonna end up in every single community throughout the United States with homes that they've either flipped, purchased, or rented out. It's just a matter of time. Another thing I'd really like to point out is that even though BlackRock is a company that's separate from Zillow that also claims that they are not trying to do anything nefarious by buying up several affordable houses throughout the country, and they're only taking a small piece of the pie currently, I want you to know what Zillow's top 10 investment firms that are actually investing in Zillow. Zillow wasn't a profit performing asset for anybody, but people kept dumping money into them. Look who's on that list. BlackRock is on that list? It wouldn't be like 
Zillow might actually be sharing that information about all of the sales through the, the United States for the top performing real estate markets with companies like BlackRock. I mean, they wouldn't do that, would they? It all sounds like a conspiracy now, right? Until you follow the money. I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, but I'm telling you, when it looks like a fish and it smells like a fish, it's not a dolphin, it's a freaking fish. And even though companies like BlackRock and Zillow are saying they're not doing anything nefarious because they're taking such a small part of the market. Don't be surprised that in 10, 15, 20 years when you go and buy your newest home in the newest subdivision that you say, oh, look, Blue Ridge subdivision. And at the bottom of the sign, it says sponsored by Zillow Real Estate Group. That would not shock me in the least bit. When you do see that 10, 20 years from now, you're gonna think of me. But we're gonna get back to BlackRock and Zillow in just a minute because there's something else we need to talk about. Today, the Federal Open Market Committee kept interest rates near zero and maintained our current pace of asset purchases. For the past year, we've been hearing that interest rates were going to increase. And of course, as soon as interest rates were going to increase, then of course that would make housing prices go down. And everybody in the comment section of my videos, I won't say everybody, but there is a good portion of people that this needs to be understood. Because interest rates go up and housing prices go down, that doesn't mean your mortgage payment is going to be less, especially if you're not buying it cash. That doesn't make any sense. So you're sure you found a house that is a lot less expensive than it was a year before, but the interest rates have gone up so much. So either you're paying a home seller that amount of money or you're paying a bank lender that amount of money over 30 years, which is gonna cost you a heck of a lot more. All you would have to do is look at a mortgage payment amortization rate and you'll see the amount of money that you pay over 30 years over interest will make you kind of sick to your stomach, especially when you pay off that whole entire note and find out the exact amount at the end, it's a little nauseating because <laughs> what you paid for 150,000, which you thought was 150,000, isn't 150,000. It's a lot more because of all that interest you've paid over the years. I'd much rather give that to a home seller than to any bank institution. That's just me personally, but you're not offsetting anything. The prices are gonna take that much because of interest rates increasing for you to offset that payment in, in the short term. So look at it that way if you're on the fence on buying a house right now. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite favorite topic right now. Supply chain issues and a labor shortage. It is almost impossible to buy or receive something that didn't spend all or part of its journey to you on a truck. New plan to tackle the global supply chain crisis. The delays of all kinds of products from around the world. Blame it on the supply chain. Concerned about supply chain problems slowing the economy. The supply chain issue has been a hot topic for the past like two weeks. Every single channel is talking about it. This has been going on through the entire pandemic, but for some reason that happens to be the thing that everybody's talking about. Those ships, that they keep showing that are just sitting there waiting to be unloaded. That has looked like that since the beginning of the pandemic. And it's nothing new. It just seems to be the thing that they want to talk about at the moment. But with that, there is still a problem with the supply chain of building materials that are coming through. And that's what some of the experts are saying is the problem why we're not having enough houses built at this time. But here is the issue with that. I ended up finding an article from 2018 that said that we don't necessarily need to have more affordable homes. We just need to have more homes, period, because that would balance out the prices of the houses. So a lot of first time home buyers would be able to afford one. If there's more homes on the market, that's of course, that's gonna make more sense. And even then, in 2018, even before then, this has been an issue. But what history has also shown us is that builders have absolutely no incentive to build more affordable homes. And the thing is, is if they built more homes, the homes that are older would sell for a lot less money. And why is it the builders don't wanna build more affordable homes? Well, let's just be realistic. If you can be a builder and have a house that is like, you know, on a postage stamp lot, it can be basically a McMansion and they have a higher return on investment. I mean, that's what you would do. You wanna make more money for the amount of space that you have. You can't really blame home builders for this. It isn't their fault. We can't really point the finger at home builders. The only thing that we can really say is that if we had more houses on the market, then 
then we wouldn't have an affordability crisis, but that isn't gonna happen anytime soon. Now there have been strides to make the affordability of homes better, but these strides kind of feel like lip service, if I'm gonna be honest with you. In the CNN article, they talk about how the House and the Senate has legislation sitting on their table. The initiative basically says that they're trying to take 50,000 homes a year and revitalize them. That just seems like a ridiculously low amount of homes when you put in consideration that there's three 3.8 million houses that need to be on the market currently to catch up to how many people are currently looking for an affordable housing option. And that isn't a number I pulled out of my rear end. No, that came from Freddie Mac and their study. They said at the end of 2020, there was a shortage of 3.8 million homes. Even if there is like a mini tiny crash at this point, it's still not gonna make a house affordable for us right now. Now that we've talked about the federal government a little bit, let's talk about our local government because that's where it really hits home. A lot of planning and zoning communities, when they have these big meetings, when some home builders have come with more affordable housing options, like let's just say manufactured homes, they're immediately denied because they feel like that it's going to bring down the home values that have already been established throughout the community. Even some home builders that have decided to build like really small houses, again, there's a lot of people that are saying, I'm not having that near my neighborhood because it's going to bring my property value down. Even though it's been proven time after time, that isn't what happens to people's property values that is a perception they have in their head so that generally gets voted out. Meaning that you don't see as many small houses that you probably should in your area. This is another thing that makes us need to follow the money because you know when it comes to political campaigns and things getting done. This is where we really need to talk to our politicians. Doesn't matter what side of the aisle they are on. This is one of those things I really need you to see because remember how I said that like one of the biggest investors of Zillow was BlackRock? Well, I want you to also see how much BlackRock donates to political campaigns. And I also want you to see how much Zillow donates to political campaigns. So it's gonna be pretty difficult for us, an uphill battle, to get some of these legislations for affordable housing options to get pushed through. That's why some of these campaigns to do 50,000 houses to revitalize an area seems kind of pathetic, but it's like lip service. They want us to be satisfied that they're doing something, but it's really because all of them are getting paid by big companies, like big corporations that are trying to save us. They're only taking a small piece of the pie, remember? For now. For now, they're only taking a small piece of the pie. This is one of those PSAs because you have seen Americans throughout the country have used their voice to make all sorts of things happen. And politicians don't get elected by corporations, even though they may get elected by the campaign donations that they give and it makes for good advertising. The thing is, is it's important to us to educate ourselves on who it is that we're electing to put in the office to help with the affordability crisis throughout the area. And that goes all the way down to your local politicians, all the way up to the federal government. And if you're looking to buy and you haven't bought a home yet and it's heading towards the 2022 election season, look to see who you're electing. See if they have any plans for the affordability crisis in your area. If they don't have anything, nothing on paper, that might be a red flag for you because it is important and it's not getting any better and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. Even if these prices were to tank, it wouldn't matter because all of these corporations, every single investor is going to scoop them up because they're trying to offset inflation and that's what they always do. To offset inflation, they buy real estate. So any house that ever hits the market, trust me, these corporations have always had deep pockets and they will scoop up as much housing as possible if these prices tank. So what do you think? Do you think that I'm being crazy and it's a conspiracy theory? Or do you really think that these corporations are trying to buy rent out to the American public throughout the United States? So I don't know, in 50 years, we're nothing but a renter's nation. I think I'm right about this. But you let me know what you think. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters and always follow the money.